In this mini-series, I want to share my findings, which I recently published under the title Satoshi Nakamoto and the Origins of Bitcoin. You find a link to this book featuring about 200 pages and more than 3,000 topical references in the description, where there's no shortage of entertaining stories on this fascinating topic. None of them is leading to the truth. After this video, you will clearly see why, so please stay until the end. I will publish follow-up videos, so please click the subscribe button to my channel below. Let's start with an overview of the mini-series that's going to follow. First of all, we look into the technological background of Bitcoin. The next chapter, we look into the Bitcoin white paper and code base before we draft a likely profile of Satoshi Nakamoto. Then we investigate ecosystems and candidates which are likely to have been linked to the creation of Bitcoin. And finally, we draw the bigger picture. Let's start with Bitcoin's technological background. Let me prepend some general remarks on the search for Satoshi Nakamoto. First of all, it's a very unique challenge. It's not comparable to previous efforts that have been made. And another finding is that everybody who has done the research so far is definitely wrong. So regarding the solution of the mystery, it is very clear that unless the true creator of Bitcoin shows up with compelling proof, there's no simple answer. It is further important to stress that for advancing on the path to the truth, don't accept any catchy punchlines. Don't follow any sensational nominations. It is much more important to look into hard facts and accept complex correlations. But let's also raise the question whether it is all about formalities, the name that is written into Satoshi Nakamoto's passport. And I would contend that what's even more important is the profile and mindset of the creator of Bitcoin and how the fascination about Bitcoin really took off. And it is actually not only the technology, but its intricate interplay with trust of its users and emotions. This video summarizes the first chapter of my book, which is called The Creation of Bitcoin. It first looks at how Bitcoin hit the surface in terms of the white paper and the notification of certain key players in the community. Then examines the terminology that Satoshi Nakamoto used in discussing Bitcoin, the circumstances of his surprising and unexpected departure and developments that took place after his exit. Next, the book jumps back into the phase when the ideas and ideology of Bitcoin were emerging in the community, the sort of traditional community that was involved in similar projects and the conferences that ran around topics relevant to Bitcoin before examining the wider context. So what's actually the subject of this presentation? Well, it is Bitcoin, the world's first peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. It was created as a payment system solving the double spending problem in digital assets. It's trustless, chiefless, and is guided by the mantra code is law. It emerged pretty much in parallel to the global financial crisis of 2007-2008. It was launched in early 2009. It has become a financial asset and instrument. It's still the dominant cryptocurrency and it is equipped with a powerful origin myth. As per the title of its very white paper, Bitcoin was designed as an electronic cash system. The objective was to create a native value layer on the internet that was particularly booming in the 1990s after the invention of the World Wide Web. Now looking in the very concept of money, ideally, the amount of money should match the limited supply of goods and services that you can purchase for it. So money should be limited. However, digital files have the properties that they're infinitely copyable. 
So the question arises how to create digital scarcity. This topic was addressed in various efforts dating back to the 1980s in the wild in academia and companies and probably also in secret service agencies. But all the pre-Bitcoin solutions were relying on a central mint. So the issue arose how to obtain trust of its participants into this one issuer. Furthermore, it was vulnerable to technical attacks like denial of service and its susceptibility to regulatory intervention. The technological status quo that entered Bitcoin in 2008 was asymmetric public key cryptography that was developed in the mid 1970s by Alice Cox and Williamson at GCHQ in the UK. However, that information only became open in the later 1990s. And in the public eye, it was independently invented by Hellman, Diffie, Alderman, Shamir, Revest, and Merkel. The cryptographical methods implemented in Bitcoin were rather well established and battle tested in 2008, which is seen as a benefit. And the only signature Bitcoin might have is its trendy double hashing methodology. Bitcoin uses digital timestamping that was invented in the 1990s by Haber and Stornetta, and Bitcoin uses interlocked cryptographic hashing. Distributed architectures were also known quite well before Bitcoin, and examples that are known in the public are the file sharing services Snapster and Nutella and the Onion Routing Tor. Bitcoin is run on a peer-to-peer -peer network with nodes. Proof of work has been developed as an anti-spam filter, so you had to invest computing time, power and energy in order to be able to reach a certain recipient for sending your emails. And Bitcoin pretty much uses Adam Back's hash cash. The Bitcoin blockchain is designed to manage payments and payments are transactions between account and Bitcoin uses the so-called unspent transaction output model or UTXO. These transactions are bundled into blocks and each block has a maximum size. So there's only a limited number of transactions that fits into a single block. The blockchain refers to a time ordered sequence of blocks and they are irreversibly interlocked by cryptographic hashing. The most innovative and fascinating aspect of Bitcoin is how it creates trust without the need for a third party. Doing so, it follows the principle of making it public and transparent. So Bitcoin runs on a permissionless peer-to-peer -peer network of miners and nodes. They share an identical copy of the ledger file, which is readable and verifiable. And the Bitcoin source code is public for creating trust and security. The central question is who writes the next block? And this is managed by the so-called Nakamoto consensus or the paradigm, the longest chain wins. So in this mechanism, the fastest proof of work miner appends the next block. Good network behavior is rewarded by issuing tokens, which are called Bitcoin. The honest chain thus wins an unsurmountable head start making it practically impossible to reverse transactions. So after solving the problem of how to create trust in a public ledger file, Bitcoin also solves the problem of bestowing value to a digital token. This token is called Bitcoin and it is distributed by the so-called Coinbase transaction in the first transaction of a block out of thin air and it is awarded to the fastest miner. The target block time is about 10 minutes and the Coinbase reward is halved about every four years, starting with a value of 50 and then 25, 12 and a half and nowadays six and a quarter. Now to understand how the value is created in Bitcoin, we have to look at the intrinsic risk of fiat currencies, which was actually a main motivation for uh, coming up with Bitcoin. 
The main risk is destabilization, which is mainly caused by steep and clandestine increase of supply. In fiat currencies, there's evidently no intrinsic supply to the production rate of paper money. This is different from the so-called gold standard, which meant that the issuer needs to promise or ideally prove to hold an equivalent reserve of a precious metal in the backhand. Now, Bitcoin also wants to pack its value against natural scarcity, but this is evidently not a physical reserve. It is mainly just cryptographically secured trust. And the miners are required to stake infrastructure, equipment, utilities, and labors to avail of the Coinbase reward. And the risk of destabilization is handled by the fact that power and equipment are impractical to ramp up in secrecy. The state of the art that Satoshi Nakamoto resorted to for the creation of Bitcoin in 2008 dates back to the 1970s, 80s and 90s, so roughly more than 10 years before the creation of Bitcoin. However, Satoshi Nakamoto cited or contacted and mentioned the following pioneers. First of all, David John, Ralph Merkel, Stuart Haber and Scott Stornetta, Jean-Jacques Kiskate, Adam Back, Wei Dai, Hal Finney, and Nick Zabo. In particular, he referenced in his white paper, Back, Kiskate, Haber, Stornetta, Dai, and Merkel. Then, he, before releasing the white paper, he specifically reached out to Back and Dai. He very early on communicated with Hal Finney, who reacted to the publication of the white paper, and then mentioned shortly after the release of the blockchain, David Chaum and Nick Zabo. The still ongoing success story of Bitcoin not only roots in its code base, but several non-technical factors. First of all, Bitcoin doesn't have a formal owner, so Satoshi Nakamoto neither filed a patent on Bitcoin, nor did he file personal copyright on the Bitcoin white paper. There's no legal entity behind Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto resisted from pre-mining, meaning that he only started mining after the public launch of the blockchain. There are no initial investors. The technology auto bootstrapped meaning that there was no paid commercial campaign to spread the news about Bitcoin. And it runs on a chiefless hierarchy, which is very astounding, in particular nowadays, as its market capitalization has reached a value of several hundred billion US dollars. Whether deliberately implanted or accidentally, the spreading of Bitcoin is also much boosted by its very fascinating origin myth. Technically, you could call it creatio ex nihilo, or creation out of nothing. It's further supported by the fading of its iconic founder, pretty much into digital nirvana. And the sacrifice of Satoshi Nakamoto of the about 1 million Bitcoin that he's believed to have mined in the year 2009. Let's look at a couple of key dates surrounding the creation of Bitcoin. So on the 18th of August 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto registered the domain Bitcoin.org. On the 31st of October of that same year, he published the Bitcoin white paper, which is the only formal document he ever issued under his pseudonym. And it was exclusively announced on the cryptography or so-called cypherpunk mailing list. He took the headline from the Times dating the 3rd of January 2009 and imprinted it in the Bitcoin source code. And on the 9th of January 2009, he publicly released Bitcoin version 0.1 and mined the first block of the Bitcoin blockchain. Between 2009 and 2010, he mainly communicated through emails, through postings on SourceForge, through postings on the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation and the Bitcoin Forum with the community. On the 13th of December 2010, he posted his last public message. And on the 28th of April 2011, we recorded the 
final email to trusted peers, which was themed, I've moved on to other things. There's also quite an interesting story behind the name Bitcoin that most people might not be aware of. So as mentioned, Bitcoin.org was registered on the 18th of August 2008, and the top-level domain.org was meant to stress the open source character of Bitcoin. However, the domain Bitcoin.com was already registered in the year 2000 by a Swedish company, and after its lapse, it was re-registered by a Korean company between 2003 and 2005. There was not much particular content to an electronic cash system. Maybe the only article that could be found was a posting uh, about Phil Zimmerman, so the godfather of PGP technology. In January 2008, Bitcoin.com was registered by Jesse Heitler. And in 2009, so after the start of the Bitcoin blockchain, it contained content posted by Bitcoin.limited. But Satoshi Nakamoto commented when he was made aware of that, that there was nothing available at the time that he created Bitcoin, which is evidently not really true. In July 2010, the domain was transferred to the Australian entrepreneur David Lowy, and in 2014 to Roger Ver. So before advancing in our investigation, let's summarize what we already know about Satoshi Nakamoto. Unquestionably, he was the charismatic inventor of Bitcoin and had significant knowledge of cryptography, electronic cash systems, probability theory, and economy. He was capable of out-of-the-box thinking and displayed an unwavering resolve to deliver what many people would have thought to be impossible. He stressed his personal privacy, whether that was just to protect his private life or even to protect his project Bitcoin. So he did that through consistent use of his pseudonymity by using privacy enhancing technologies on the internet and by not leaving any physical traces. So the only means of getting information on Satoshi Nakamoto is essentially through his text messages and online metadata. His behavior also shows a certain altruism. So he handed control of his Bitcoin baby to the community by saying something like it's in good hands with everybody and never touched his 1 million Bitcoin that he's believed to have mined in the year 2009 alone and which would be worth in nowadays tariff tens of billions of US dollars. In addition to its astounding role as a financial instrument, Bitcoin has also created an unprecedented mystery in the long history of science and technology. Firstly, the inventor purposely abstained from fame impact and fortune. Bitcoin also creates a unique case of a single-handed development of a seminal modern day technology. And it triggered a new field which might be termed digital archeology, span which means that we are looking for somebody who is likely still alive other than classical cases, let's say of Julius Caesar or Napoleon, where the subject under investigation has deceased hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. Technically, the search for Satoshi Nakamoto comes down to matching a pseudonym against a real identity. But there are essential pieces missing in this search. First of all, Satoshi Nakamoto succeeded to register the domain bitcoin.org and various other online services like for his email addresses without a verified identity. Next, he didn't leave any physical traces, for example, audio video recordings, fingerprints or DNA. We also don't have a secondary source willing to come out and give credible witness of the creation of Bitcoin. And we don't even have a, a target candidate. So what is the strategy finding the needle in a haystack. Well, we should collect as much circumstantial evidence as possible, for example, in Satoshi Nakamoto's writings and the metadata associated with it, 
and assess it regarding its quality and credibility. Then we should draft a consistent phantom that patches together all the elements we have and find stories to close the gaps. Then we can come up with a list of candidates with the risk that we have insufficient information on them and that we're missing out dark horses. This list can then be run against an exclusion filter, but the problem is that this might emerge with multiple hits. In the radically new approach that is illustrated in the book accompanying this video series, we want to see what can be found by accepted research practice. We follow the motto, read your Satoshi rather than following Chinese whispers. We use sources like the Bitcoin white paper, messages and postings issued by Satoshi Nakamoto, his websites, metadata and code. And the approach follows that no stone should be left unturned, which led up to about 250 pages of text and about three and a half thousand sources cited in the white paper, which is then also a very good database for doing your own research. We focus on hard facts, plausible interpretations, and clearly separate facts from speculation. Stating the objectives and strategy of this investigation, we first want to clarify the roots of a seminal 21st century technology. We want to understand the background and mindset of its enigmatic founder. We want to draft a putative profile of Satoshi Nakamoto and define a list of exclusion criteria so to rule out certain nominations. Then we want to elucidate the ecosystems out of which Bitcoin might have evolved, which are termed hatcheries. And then we go through the profiles of a list of exemplary candidates. So the strategy we pursue in absence of a verifiable formal identity or an eyewitness account, we essentially draw a circle around the profile, starting with the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto's postings and emails. Then we look into metadata like time patterns, time zones, geotags and software used. We look into potential meaning of numbers and numeral systems used by the creator of Bitcoin. Then we scrutinize the Bitcoin code and parameters for queues. We look at qualifications Satoshi Nakamoto certainly must have had, like C++ coding, computing and networks, and certain information we can extract regarding his personal data, like age, nationality and so on, and his personality. We draft a profile from this and on the basis of that we look at possible Bitcoin hatchery, so ecosystems which likely had a significant impact on the creation of Bitcoin and candidates that were linked to these ecosystems. Then we define exclusion criteria to narrow down the list and eventually, hopefully, we have one or at least a selection of candidates that could be Satoshi Nakamoto. Without preempting the outcomes of the following videos, I'm very confident to say that anyone claiming to know for sure who created Bitcoin other than Satoshi Nakamoto himself is definitely wrong. So when following through my investigation, you will know who is not Satoshi Nakamoto. And we will end up with a very tiny list of possible ecosystems and candidates which likely played a key role in the creation of Bitcoin. For the purpose of this investigation, I carried out my own recce. This was composed of interviews I carried out with several authors that were cited in the Bitcoin white paper some pioneers in the electronic cash systems and cryptography, staff of relevant US administration, some journalists, TV producers, and Bitcoin enthusiasts, and a self-nominated Satoshi Nakamoto candidate. This all comes on top of intensive search through the literature, topical databases, websites, news groups, and archival services.
The full scope of this investigation is laid out in much greater detail in a book that I recently published under the title Satoshi Nakamoto and the Origins of Bitcoin. It is available under the URL satoshinakamoto.be. In its table of contents, I cover the creation of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin white paper, the references that are listed by Satoshi Nakamoto in the white paper, it looks for potential cues towards the origin of Bitcoin in the Bitcoin blockchain itself, investigates Bitcoin dates, and tries to find hints towards Satoshi Nakamoto's person and personality. Then we consider whether there are certain digits and numeral systems used by Satoshi Nakamoto that provide certain hints. We sort all this circumstantial evidence collected so far to draft a likely profile of Satoshi Nakamoto. Next, we elucidate potential ecosystems or hatcheries of which Bitcoin might have emerged and then test several exemplary candidates against this profile. And finally, we draw a bigger picture and consider Bitcoin as a cultural artifact and investigate its perspectives. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel as there will be further videos on this topic coming up in the near future.